Welcome to Engineering is in Our DNA, a podcast series where we talk about the next in engineering that is powering the future for businesses across the world. In this episode, Manu Puthamana, the Vice President of our Cyber Defense Services, interviews Setu Sitharaman, our Chief Risk Officer, about the increasingly evolving threat landscape in the post-pandemic era and the need to integrate cyber resiliency into organizations. They will also talk about how Emphasis helps clients build a cyber resilient business. Hi everyone. Welcome to Engineering is in our DNA. I am Manu Putumana, Vice President of Cyber Defense Services here at Emphasis. In this role, I am responsible for securing our clients against cybersecurity threats and in turn help their businesses operate with cyber confidence. Today, in this podcast, I am joined by Mr. Setu Sitharaman, Chief Risk Officer at Emphasis, a colleague, and more importantly, a friend. And we are going to have a discussion about cyber resiliency. As businesses continue to adopt and adapt to digital world, a change in the ways enterprises and individuals collaborate and work from anywhere at any time is in fact transforming how cybersecurity will be shaped from this generation onwards. As the industry evolves to meet growing cyber threats, nations, governments, industries, and organizations are looking for ways to becoming resilient to these cyber threats. On that note, let me invite Setu to throw some light into this topic of cyber resilience. Welcome Setu to this podcast. Very good morning. A pleasure to have you here. Thanks, Manu. And um, a very interesting and an important uh, topic, uh, uh, especially uh, for uh, the cyber professionals today. Absolutely. Indeed, Setu, I agree 100%. Very important topic in the current context. And on that note, let me start by asking for the benefit of our audience how do we define cyber resilience or what is cyber resilience so manu uh, resilience or a resilient uh, uh, object um, is something uh, is a capacity of uh, the object to bounce back to its original shape when it gets uh, disturbed in the organizational context and from a cyber resilience perspective, it can be defined as uh, the capacity of the organization to get back to its normal operations as early as possible after it suffers a cyber disruption. Uh, That is, um, a cyber disruption is inevitable. Uh, because today, organiz- no organization is immune from a cyber attack. No organization can say, no, they are never attacked. Uh, in the famous saying goes that a, organizations are attacked. Some of them, they know that they are attacked. Some of them, they don't know that they are attacked. Given that cyber disruption is going to be inevitable because of the uh, ubiquitous uh, Uh, and sophisticated attack that we face, cyber resilience has uh, assumed center stage in managing and in continuing operations today. I would sum it up like this. Cyber resilience is essentially an organizational's ability to defend cyber threats by predicting, preventing, detecting, responding against cyber threats and cyber disruptions. Thank you, Setu. I believe it cannot have been ex- explained in more simpler terms. I love the way you, how you define the resiliency of an object as an ability to come back to its original shape when it is threatened by something external and, and how uh, important uh, in the context of cyber resilience for organizations is. Um, thank you. Something as important as this, that is resilience against cyber threats, usually sees the whole industry adopting and moving towards it in unison. 
and this often leads to certain trends. So Setu, what are the key trends in cyber resilience you are seeing gaining ground in the 2022 and thereafter? Fantastic uh, question, a very relevant one, uh, Manu, uh, on a topic which is very um, new and emerging. The first thing uh, that I want to highlight is that uh, unlike many other uh, domains where we have established frameworks, global standards, cyber resilience being a new um, emerging topic uh, lacks a established mm -hmm. and accepted framework. In the absence of uh, an accepted framework, several initiatives are being put across by um, various companies, the industry, cyber industry per se, uh, because this has assumed much more importance and everyone feels that today we need to, um, you know, uh, address this cyber resilience because it brings immense value. So quickly, uh, I can recall um, there are about four or five important trends that I see um, from a cyber resilience perspective. The first and foremost is focus on threat intelligence using uh, new gen technologies, especially AI, ML, uh, because this serves uh, uh, you know, a huge purpose uh, for uh, the companies from a mitigation perspective. Uh, in terms of uh, providing predictive models so that uh, a CISO or the security organization of a company gets more time. The second thing that I see is uh, the zero trust concept, focus on identity and access management. And of course, uh, uh, related to the that, uh, the third one is the uh, security operation center the next gen security operation center, which has become the single pane of glass for the CISO. Uh, and, and while these three are definitely emerging, there is another thing which has been there, which is being thought of as a very important aspect uh, to move into cloud, become uh, or adopt cloud in every aspect uh, to um, you know enjoy the resiliency of uh, uh, being in the cloud itself. That is another thing that every organization has started feeling today that this hybrid model itself is not really helping and uh, brings more challenges. So that is another area where I see a growing trend which uh, innately provides uh, uh, resilient uh, organizations. And of course, the last one is the automation, uh, which is which is uh, which has been there, but there is more and more focus on the automation perspective because the time to identify, time to react, uh, you know, identifying threats and uh, achieve the speed to mitigate the risks uh, becomes much more um, efficient when you automate some of these processes. Uh, these are the typical trends that I see. Uh, while some of them are still emerging in terms of quantum computing and other things, uh, which are more at the academic level being discussed, but definitely that is going to help us in the uh, coming days. Thank you, Setu. In 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 summary, what what you are saying is there are several trends like the AI ML intelligence adoption of uh, zero trust. <clears throat> Uh, ha having a single pane of glass and security operations that CISOs have been doing and and some technologies like cloud which is bringing certain level of resiliencies as a part of its design. So all these different trends that were in progress or that have been in progress for some time, they are all converging uh, towards organizational cyber resiliency. Absolutely. Tetu. With all these trends converging towards building cyber resilience in organizations, how important is awareness about it across the organization, right from the board to the junior most uh, employee in the organization? And if it's important, how do you communicate the importance of cyber resilience across the organization? Perfect question. 
thanks munu for asking this is uh, uh, something you know uh, which is a big challenge that uh, um, that every ciso and every security professional has to uh, go through and not limited only to security but also to everyone uh, who rolls out a new concept or a new initiative first and foremost uh, uh, is uh, you know when when an initiative has to be rolled out or when a framework new framework has to be rolled out in the organization uh, it has to be a top down approach and uh, uh, rightly said uh, cyber security today plays a center stage it is an enterprise risk the boards are very keen to know what is happening how we are secure and all so this is equally important that we take this topic to the board and the top management and provide them what we are planning to do and how we are planning to do uh, because of the importance and value cyber resilience brings to the organizational operations that much said on that uh, from a um, employee awareness perspective and cyber resilience manu you will find that uh, uh, you know security of an organization depends upon the human element of the organization and in my 33 years of experience i have seen uh, we can have any sophisticated equipment any sophisticated machine but the human behind the machine is the one who is going to actually deliver the value of the machine so in our case uh, being people intensive and it intensive it becomes very important that we address the weak link because human element has um as innately uh, certain weaknesses in terms of forgetfulness inadvertence or being casual and uh, security awareness on a daily basis on a weekly basis on a monthly basis is an essential ingredient to drive this uh, awareness about cyber resilience about knowing the basics about knowing what is usual so that they can differentiate from the unusual i am reminded of a famous term in sanskrit which is tasmatva which means it can be translated as eternal vigilance today it demands eternal vigilance on the part of every you know employee within the organization and that is how we can achieve highest level of uh, uh, cyber security and also resilience and definitely a separate uh, awareness session on the importance of cyber resilience is also a good idea to drive this new concept thank you setu uh, some of the key points that you mentioned that i liked a lot about is the that the board is more increasingly conscious of cyber threats it's its importance to organizations and uh, their inquisitiveness towards it and uh, your quote uh, um, about eternal vigilance that sums it up all the need of the hour again uh, for becoming cyber resilient setu now it is clear how importance awareness as as a pivot uh, has a pivotal role in helping organizations to become cyber resilient uh, in fact awareness from right from the top to bottom now on that note let me broaden this question little more what are some of the other challenges presently faced by leaders and businesses uh, in in achieving cyber resilience super thanks munu for uh, getting here i was uh, i was little worried whether uh, you're going to give a chance to express the uh major challenges faced by industry leaders especially the security leaders in the industry um the first and foremost which is of course you know uh, every every domain faces is a rapid and disruptive changes that we face in the tech world uh making it very difficult to um grasp what is happening and then architect some stable solution so that is another important rather not another it is the, uh, the most important thing that we see as a first challenge so rapid changes 
in technology, rapid changes in business models, and so on, uh, you know, is really a big challenge that each of the security uh, folks face uh, uh, in 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 bringing a, a stable cyber resilience framework. The second important is the skill gap. Today, cyber resilience demands a high level of uh, skill um, from rather a mosaic of skills. When I say mosaic of skills, you need to have the highest level of skill, uh, say cyber forensics, incident response skill, you need to have networking skill, you need to have uh, a combination of all these will be required to manage a uh, uh, good cyber resilience program. That today is lacking and industry is trying to catch up with the requirements. And a concomitant uh, challenge that we face is the scarcity of these skills. It is there, but uh, you know, there is also acute scarcity uh, you know, of these skills and they are pretty rare now. Then of course, um, is the because of all these things and the rapid changes in the technology menu, we are seeing that it many of the security processes even today especially the l1 level it is all human intensive lack of automation is posing another major challenge in terms of uh, having a good time to react time to prevent and time to mitigate and probably uh, we spoke in the earlier question where uh, the ai based or next gen based uh, Technology is being, um, you know, experimented, and that is really going to be a important thing. Uh, the sooner we get, this challenge can be addressed well. And I think I covered the other one uh, in terms of uh, how a lack of established framework, uh, like a, a ISO 22301, which talks about the business continuity, the ITDR, and other things. Uh, Today, this is the cyber resilience uh, is devoid of a very, um, you know, um, recognized framework. And the last but not least, let me also highlight you one of the important challenge, which is more an internal or, or uh, ch a challenge related to the turf battles that I see between the business continuity folks, the ITDR folks, and the incident response and other groups. A combination of all these people um, is a must to achieve highest level of cyber resilience. But each one has got their own fears and that is also coming as a big challenge for the CISO or for an organization to have a good cyber resilience program. That means, Setu, Building cyber resilience or the challenges ahead of the leaders and organizations are both uh, tactical and strategic elements in them. Uh, like you said, at a technology level, there are adoption of automation or the lack of it. Um, uh, skill gap or widening skill shortage is something that the industry has been speaking for a lot uh, and, and, and the, the gap is only widening is what we hear. Uh, and and at a strategic level, lack of a ma uh, established framework like what we have for many other areas associated with security um, is an important gap the industry has. And uh, th last but not least, the 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 need for a bringing together of some of the traditional security or organizational silos like the BC, DR, incident response, etc., to make this umbrella function of resiliency. I think that puts it all together, brings, brings all the challenges under one umbrella. Thank you. With challenges discussed, Setu, the natural next step is to look for solutions or approach to solutions. And I also want to take this opportunity to connect to the theme that we have for the podcast. Engineering is in our DNA. What does that mean to you? That is, engineering is in our, our DNA. And how does the emphasis apply engineering principles to help clients build cyber resilience? Perfect uh, concluding question for a topic uh, very close to me, Manu. 
cyber resilience essentially demands a tech based solution. If you see, it is all IT, completely technology and IT that um, surrounds, that is uh, involved in providing or bringing cyber resiliency in the organization. It's all about IT. So, given that it is a tech solution that is required, emphasis is ideal place to provide uh, this because engineering is in our DNA. What is this? It is identifying how organizations operate and what they are trying to achieve versus what they have and providing engineering solutions. It is about us finding engineering solutions needed to help the organization securely to achieve its objective or help build cyber resiliency to that. The engineering solutions may come in the form of uh, frameworks, tools, technologies, service elements, intelligence uh, based on AI, ML, automation, and so on and so on. And we are all good in this. These solutions uh, help organizations bridge the gap between the business goal and its capability in achieving those business goals uh, by use of technology. With engineering in our DNA, Manu, we look at what businesses have and help engineer a program to bake in cyber resilience into their overall business operations and not just IT operations. I also want to conclude with another important statement here. As Emphasis designs and develops and implements cyber resiliency program, it not only I repeat, it not only looks at helping the organizations to bounce back, but also to improve itself from a disruption. So that next time when something of this nature happens, there is no requirement for a separate solution or an intervention by the management. The systems and process should be able to Take care of it on its own. That is, I call it as anti-fragility or the evolutionary capability that even every living species has to, to gain from disorder, to gain from disruption, and to gain from incidents. We all do that, and pandemic is a classic example. Thank you, so Setu. So engineering solutions not only to bounce back from disruptive events, but also to reduce possibilities of such just such disruptions, making organizations anti-fragile. That is beautiful. In this podcast, we looked at what cyber resilience is, trends that are leading to it, challenges that organizations are facing, and approaches to building cyber resilience. That brings us to the end of this insightful discussion. Thank you, Setu, for joining us today. I'm sure our audience now have a holistic perspective on cyber resilience. Thank you, Manu. Thank you very much. 